This video segment will help you communicate effectively with individuals with a developmental disability or DD. An individual with a developmental disability may communicate in ways that are different from a person without a developmental disability, especially in stressful situations. For example, an individual may use repetitive language, repeat the end of your sentence, take longer to respond to questions, even to the point where answers may seem to come out of nowhere, understand what you say and have difficulty expressing themselves. Conversely, they may give the impression that they understand when that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. I'm here, you answer all the questions, Good. I'm just here to help you out if you're having problems. Okay. okay. Hi Thomas, how Hi. are you? May again. So Thomas, when did you notice your bike went missing? This morning. This morning? Yeah, this morning. And where did you leave it? Backyard. Your backyard? Yeah. Do you remember what color your bike was, Thomas? It was blue. Did you see anybody? I look at guys, I look at guys' face, but okay. I see wearing black mask. Okay. Yeah. It is best to double check the individual's understanding and responses and give them plenty of time to process information and respond. Here is Dr. Jessica Jones, Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Psychology, Queen's University, and Clinical Director of the Developmental Disabilities Consulting Program. First, um, speaking clearly, um, because you have to recognize individuals need to listen to your message, they need to think about a response, and then they need to find the words to express himself or herself. Using simplified language with concrete terms is very important. So it's recommended three to five words in a sentence maximum is optimal to, to improve communication with an individual. And always use pauses before you, between your requests. So allowing someone to the time to process information and give a response. So an example is we use is the three second rule. It's very difficult to do because we don't naturally do it or intuitively do it. So I use the example when I'm training with regards to when we go to a country that doesn't speak English. We intuitively defer to nonverbal skills in terms of gestures, where is the bathroom, what time it is, driving. Um, so using those as well as visual aids is very, very important to get your information across. It may also neutralize the situation in the environment because you're avoiding verbal skills which may escalate them because they do not understand what you're saying or their level of comprehension may be difficult. Did she say if it was a friend or if it was a stranger? I think it was a stranger. Okay. Um, do you <coughs> know uh, maybe what this person looked like? Officers would need to use comprehension checks as a backup. So it's a tool in their pocket that they can use to double check they're actually getting the information that they want. So changing it, asking the question in two or three ways and see if they're getting the same response will quickly um, determine whether they understand what they're saying. And also using the visual aids of gestures and written material to provide a full circle of understanding. So you're friends with Elena, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And she told you what had happened to her at the mall. Mm-hmm. Did Alana say what exactly was taken from her? She had her purse stolen. Okay. She had 20 bucks in her, in her purse. Okay. At the mall. At the mall, all at right. At the full court. Okay. And she had 20 bucks in her purse. All right. Do you remember which mall it was? Yeah, the cat center. Okay. Did Alana tell you who stole her money? No, she didn't. Okay. Um, do you remember a day that this might have happened? Mm, no, I don't. No? Is there anything that you can sort of remember that happened around this that might help jog your memory? Mm -hmm. No? Um, do you remember what day it was that she told you? Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Does Elena know this person? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Um, is there anything else you can remember Elena telling you about what happened at the mall? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
It's important to remember to take your time, stay calm, and avoid getting into a power struggle. It may help to seek out the help of a support worker. Support workers can provide a calming influence and help facilitate a better conversation. You can ask the individual if there is a support worker you can contact to help out. Here is a list of resources that may provide you with further knowledge and support.